Hello everybody. Welcome to this Gyrocopter Flying Club flight briefing film. Intended to be used by all pilots to gain a better understanding of flying a gyroplane, in this film we aim to give insight into the dynamics and possible errors associated with takeoffs. Back in a time before even Pathé could afford colour film, gyroplanes had no rotor RPM gauge, no pre-rotator and a single seat meant pilots spending days of basic handling perhaps in a gyro glider, to understand control forces, control movement and feel whilst developing one's own muscle memory, often without the help of an instructor. This incremental approach before making a first takeoff plays a similar role in today's training and even in the rollout of new airliners. This DC-10 film testing prior to its first flight in 1970. You may recognise elements of this typical gyroplane takeoff pre rotation, brake release, ground roll, and a wheel balance before the gyroplane unsticks from the ground, becoming airborne. The aircraft is flown level at a low height whilst airspeed is built before the pilot climbs away at a predetermined airspeed. Looking at further clips, we notice how often the wheel balance becomes dominant, leading to inaccuracies. Focus on wheel balancing typically leads to over rotation. The aircraft may unstick early, but speed is low, meaning noticeable torque and prop wash effects because the tailplane isn't working well aerodynamically. Finally, due to the wheel balance creating higher than necessary angles of attack and therefore high drag, acceleration is poor, meaning a long airspeed build up phase is required prior to climbing away. By making the takeoff a series of individual actions, the pilot becomes overly focused on one element or is left behind the aircraft mentally. Many textbooks identify the wheel balance as some point the stick is moved or power added, leading to pilots to fixate on this area of the takeoff. Flying takeoffs from the wheel balance gives low acceleration and high drag, meaning that unsticky are often so slow the aircraft sinks back to the ground, potentially with increased yaw and roll. On the other hand, climbing away at low airspeed, intentional or otherwise, is very hazardous. Your pilot operating handbook will have a height velocity chart that should be well understood. Another misunderstanding is that unless the stick is kept fully back until the rotor is almost at flying speed, rotor RPM will not increase and blade sailing will occur. This is blade sailing. It is caused by low or no rotor RPM and high wind speed, causing the blades to flap and flex. My technique having commenced the ground roll and seen increased rotor RPM having first pre-rotated to 200 is put the stick forward around one fist and add 100% power over 4 to 5 seconds. At this point the rotor RPM should be near flying speed with the nose barely off the ground. Hold that attitude and let the aircraft fly off the ground. This technique has a lot of benefits. Better for acceleration because rotor disc angle of attack is creating less drag. Aero benefit from the tailplane because airspeed at unstick is higher. You'll be airborne with 100% power all the time. You'll have little airspeed build-up phase because airspeed is closer to climb speed and it eliminates the drama of over-rotation that is the cause of this tail strike on the grass at Popham. Don't focus upon techniques that specifically require the nose attitude to be high such as so-called performance takeoffs to mean the earliest one can get airborne rather than an ability to climb away. Plan takeoffs and be familiar with the airfield and your aircraft from the pilot operating handbook. Takeoff distance, climb rates and the effect of weight and density altitude have on performance. Don't let this be you. Happily, there were no injuries. Look forward to seeing you next time.